Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen and uh, we're going to talk about fishing in the fall. Man, I absolutely love the fall and I love the spring. Summer kicks my tail. Winter's tough, but I enjoy it. Uh, but the fall is just so much fun. What happens on lakes that have, well, any lake really, the bass go shallow and try to find stuff to eat before the winter kicks in. And right now I've, I'm, I'm uh, faced with high 60s, low 70s. It's about 71 and a half degree water temperature right now and uh, rising water, muddy water, and so everything uh, that's going on right now just tells me the bass are shallow. The bait fish move shallow in the fall, they move to the backs of the creeks. Uh, we've had a lot of rain that's brought the water level up, the bass move shallow when the water level rises. It's muddy water, so when the uh, water's muddy, the bass go shallow so they can see better, um, so they can, you know, they can eat better and everything else, so they can survive, really. They don't like being deep in muddy water. So everything says in this in this creek says that the fish are are shallow, and uh, so what are some of the baits that I'll I'll tie on? Well, I'll tie on spinner baits. You know, chartreuse and white with uh, with gold blades are really good in muddy water. Uh, maybe a lipless crankbait, um, a a black and blue creature bait, black and blue craw bait, flipping into bushes. Because what happens is the bass will get shallow and they'll get into that thick cover. Um, be it grass, be it bushes, be it anything, a lay down or anything else, they'll get in that thick cover and they'll sit there and wait for the bait fish to swim by because the bait fish are up shallow too. And the, and the bait fish are kind of cruising the banks. And, uh, and the, the key is, at least the key for me in the fall, is to cover a lot of water. So I'm throwing a spinner bait most of the time, lipless crankbait, and, uh, and just having an absolute ball catching fish. Trying to move stuff. <laughs> so sit back, relax, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it. But basically all I'm doing is I'm keeping the boat in shallow water, and I'm staying in shallow water, and I'm fishing shallow water, and I'm just trying to, trying to get bites. And they will hit just about anything that comes within their strike zone. So let's see what happens. All right, so I get asked this question a lot. What if I don't have a fish finder? Or what if I'm a bank fisherman and I don't have a fish finder? You can still um, maximize your time fishing by just using your eyes. What do you see? I mean, what's going on around you? I pulled into this creek and I've already chased up five birds on the bank that are fish eaters, heron, white ones, and blue heron. So I know that, that if they're in here, then that's where the food is. They've got to eat too. They've got to eat fish to survive. And then I'm just kind of watching the water and I see ripples and bubbles and fish coming up splashing. I mean, everything points to the fact that they are act, they're fishing here and they're actively feeding. So I'm going to spend some time here. If I get to an area, say I pull into a little pocket or pull into a creek and there's no activity it's dead there's no birds on the bank there's no fish coming up i don't see any ripples on the water from bait fish i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in there just not i mean it's it's a waste of time i pull out and i go find somewhere else that may have a little bit better a little bit more active fish so i mean be smart about it we've got some great tools that in our you know on our head our ears our eyes and our brain to, uh, to be able to find fish. Don't think because you have, don't have a fish finder or if you're stuck on the bank that you can't uh, maximize your time on the water and you can't use though what you have, the tools you have to your advantage. I just think it's crazy. I spent 12 years bank fishing. And uh, you know, you just, you just pay attention. Like right here, I've got a white bird sitting on the bank. He's looking for food. And so I know the bass are in the area and they're looking for food. They're, they're also looking for food. And I'm concentrating in, on zero to three feet of water right now. And yes, you can catch a 10 pounder in eight inches of water. I was talking about, about the kind of spinner baits that I love to throw in the, in the, in the fall. Especially, well, let's talk about muddy water. It's not so much in the fall. You know, the choice of spinner baits depends on water clarity or your color and, and the type that I use anyway. 
Muddy water, I like gold blades. I like, um, this is a, these are, are willow leaf blades. I like Colorado blades too because they give off more vibration and the, and the bass's lateral line can pick up that vibration and they can hone in on it better. I like chartreuses. I like chartreuse and white. I don't like white. Um, I like to have good bright colors. And uh, I, tend, I tend to go with smaller blades because the bait fish are smaller this time of year. Um, and that's what I'm the most successful with. A uh, quarter ounce to three eighths ounce, maybe a half ounce, but in this muddy water, I want a light one. So I'm going with a quarter ounce right now. Um, a little bluegill chasing bait fish. I mean, the bait fish are tiny, tiny, tiny. So, but anyway, so that's what I like for a spinner bait. Um, I'll throw a frog, like I got matted grass up here. If I think that there's, gra there's bass in the matted grass, I'll throw a frog. Um, I mean, it's, it just, it just depends on what I'm fishing, what's in front of me. So, well, there's two mallards. You know, and say I come up to some thick cover like the grass or bushes, like there's some bushes back in here, I'll flip it a minute. Um, muddy water, I'm still fishing muddy water, so it's, I consider it kind of low light conditions. I'm gonna go with a dark colored soft plastic and we'll pitch in there. Uh, you know, black frog, dark colored frog. I just, that's, that's just what I have confidence in. And so I'm definitely gonna go with, with something dark. The bass can pick up on it better. If it drops down in front of their nose, it surprises them and they open their mouth. And you know, by the time they realize it's not something, it's too late, I've already set the hook. So the bass's uh, strike zone gets really small in muddy water. So you have to make multiple pitches to the same brush uh, before you're sure there's nothing in it. I'm talking, it's right in front of their nose is about all they can see. You pitch down in there and you bounce it a few times, you pitch down in there, bounce it a few times, and you just kind of move it around the bush. So hopefully there's enough water underneath those bushes way back there that I can go and try to find a fish. I am definitely going to pick something up and punch the outside edges and down into the holes. Ooh, I thought I had a fish. That was weird feeling. Well, I got all the way back here and my life died. <laughs> in other words, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, the bushes aren't in, in deep water. I, I want the bushes, the base of them to be in, a, you know, at least a, about 12 inches of water so the bass will get around them. Um, I was going to grab a, a flipping bait and, you know, pitch and flip into, into this stuff, but that's three inches of water right there. So I've made some cat, several cast probably about 50 to 100 casts around in this area and just I don't see it I don't feel it so we're gonna pull back out and uh, kind of fish fish my way out of the creek this is about as far back as you want to go or I want to go and not see any fish because there'd be some all over this flat if they were here feeding and I'm gonna pull out and fish my way out let's see what happens Ooh, there's one. Stay on. Get in a the boat. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Begin to think I wasn't going to find one, but I did. Came back out, halfway out the creek, found a fish. Now I'm going to fish this area a little bit slower and uh, see if I can catch two or three more. But that's it, that's fall fishing for me. I'm gonna spend the rest of the, I'm gonna spend until the water temperature gets in the low 50s. Um, I'm gonna spend it shallow. I'm gonna be kicking up mud with my trolling motor. Um, I mean, literally going to be beating the crap out of every piece of cover that I can find shallow. So, and I'm gonna spend it, like I said, I'm gonna spend doing that until the low 50s, 52, 53 degrees. And then I feel like the bass stop feeding a little bit and they start to pull out um, and, uh, then I move into my, my winter pattern. But anyway, well, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing um, and uh, let me help you teach them how to fish. Show them my, my videos, to show your friends my videos. Uh, get with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I do Periscope, I do a whole bunch of stuff. I'll leave the links at the end. 
Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed. Uh, more importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish and have some fun. Take care. Have a great day.